Uh, 4.6 is very similar to 4.5. They have the same concepts in them except now we're talking about a system. And earlier we talked about what systems mean. System means two or more. So when we graph systems, what we're going to have to remember about this is we have to do what works for both. We have to shade what works for both inequalities. For systems, we have to shade what works for both inequalities. I'm going to give you an example without anything else other than a picture. Let's just look at a picture real quick. Bam, bam. And I'm going to draw two lines. Here's my first one. And this inequality, that's my first one right there, the blue one. I'm going to change colors. And I'm going to do another one right here in red. For the blue inequality, I am going to shade this side of the blue line. For the red one, shade what works for both inequalities. Work shade what works for both inequalities. Okay, so I have the right side of the blue line shaded. And I am going to shade uh, above the red line. Here's the deal. I'm going to write some numbers for you, okay? There is this section that's over here. That doesn't work for both. You have this section right here, which only works for the red line. You have this section here, which has the blue lines, arrows, and the red lines, arrows. You have this section, which only has the blue lines, arrows. For problems like this, what we have to do is shade the part that works for both. In this case, we would shade just this piece. It's the part that has red and blue. It's the part that would turn purple, if you if you would. Oh. Where's red and where's blue? <laughs> I'm going to do one more quick example. And I'm going to draw the same two graphs that we have, the two lines. Earlier, I shaded to the right of the blue line and above the red line. Now I'm going to shade below the red line. And I'm going to shade still to the right of the blue line. I'm only going to change one thing. Depending on which side of the lines you're shading, you have to do what works for both lines. Meaning, if I'm on the right side of the blue line and I'm below the red line, what works for both is where the red lines and the blue lines cross each other. It's not the top right anymore. It is now this part is what I would shade. 
This particular quadrant is what works for both. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Is there anybody who's confused by that? Okay, I'm going to give you one more shortcut. Okay. When y is on the left and x is on the right. When y is on the left and x is on the right. I'm going to show you something like this. Shade above when Y is on the left and X is on the right. It only works if Y is on the left and X is on the right. <coughs> Shade above. When y is on the left and x is on the right, if it's less than or less than or equal to, we shade below. This sometimes works. Almost always works, as a matter of fact. I'll say nine times out of ten, this will work and it will be a shortcut for you. The times where it doesn't work is when you have a vertical line or is it just a vertical line? I'm trying to think if a horizontal, no, horizontal lines work, only a vertical line. That's the only exception to the rule, okay? Here we go. So this is basically a shortcut, but you can still test a point. This is a shortcut, but you can still test can still test a point like zero zero you can still do it the zero zero way that you did in 4.5 but because now we're doing two lines it might be easier if you use the shortcut let me give you an example like number two number two on your next worksheet will look like this Sometimes they have these little curly braces with them. 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 4. x plus 3y is less than or equal to 6. And it's going to say graph the system. Now the issue with this is just like you had before. 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 4. x plus 3y is less than or equal to 6. Focus. You are still going to have to do what you did in 4.5, which is to put this in a slope-intercept form. That means, like on this top equation, you're going to have to solve for y. So let me write that top equation down. 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 4. I want to get the y by itself. I'm going to subtract 3x and subtract 3x to the other side. Reason why I'm subtracting 3x is to get the y by itself. Thank you. And then, I don't have the y by itself. Jur, you're supposed to go right now. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. So it's 930. 
When you divide by negative 2, because you're dividing by a negative, this has to flip greater than or equal to. Why? Negative divided by negative is a positive 3 over 2x minus 2. Now that you have your top equation in a slope-intercept form, you can graph it. But I wouldn't stop there. I would go over to your second equation and get that in the slope-intercept form too. Might as well. I would subtract x and subtract x. 3y is less than or equal to negative x plus 6. Then I would divide by 3. When you divide one thing by 3, divide everything by 3. y is less than or equal to negative 1 third x plus 2. Once you get your two equations, now you can go to graph. I have my two equations. I can do exactly what I did before. I start with my B, put my first dot at negative 2. From there, I go to my slope, rise 3, run of 2, up 3, over 2, up 3, over 2. solid or dotted for this blue one. I heard somebody say solid. I think it was Mark. Good job. Good job, Mark. Mark Green. Hey, there's two. Hey, it's okay. Now we're going to shade above or below. Remember, we could test zero, 0, if I wanted to. I can plug in 0, 0 and go as 0 greater than or equal to negative 2 and see if this side works or the other side. But I can also use a shortcut which says I shade above this line. Shade above. And I just draw arrows because I haven't shaded my final answer yet. I don't know what my other line is going to look like yet. But I know I need to be above this blue line. Then I go to my red lines graph. I know what my y-intercept is here. My y-intercept is up 2. I make a dot. From that y-intercept, I use the slope. Negative 1 third means down 1 over 3. Down 1 over 3. Solid or dotted? Solid. Now, since the Y is on the left and the X is on the right, <coughs> above or below? So below the red line, below the red line, below the red line. And then you're going to have to make a decision about what you're going to shade. You can shade what works for both. Do you know which one works for both this time? Is it the top? Is it the bottom? Is it the right? Or is it the left? There's only one answer that works. Left. Left. If you said left, you are correct. This is what side we should be shading right here. That's our final answer. What does that mean? All the solutions are in that shaded part. The last thing that we're going to do is to talk about the one possible trick question. What if you had to graphs and you had one graph 
over here like this and you were shading above it and you had another graph over here like this and you were shading below it what works for both there is a possible no solution with this stuff as well if you're trying to solve a system and you're doing above one and below another and they do not intersect, they're going in opposite directions, you can also have a no solution with that as well. Okay, we'll end our notes right there.